Hello, welcome indeed to Knitter Matters. This is season four, episode 13. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Cheryl Lampard. I'm a uh, fibre artist, a knitting educator. I'm a Craft Yarn Council certified knitting instructor. And many years ago, I was the proud owner of a yarn store in Brighton, England. And one of the great joys of having a yarn store is that I got to be able to teach people how to knit. I loved doing it then, I love doing it now. Now this week is week three of our festive knits. And to recap, in week one, we did this little gift card holder. You've got your little gift card in there and it's held by a button. And many of you said that you were gonna use that as a project with your children or grandchildren, which is lovely to hear. Then last week we did, uh, week two, we did these little mini bobble hats um, that you can hang on your tree or a garland, whatever you want. I think these are really cute, I like these. Um, and this episode, we're going to be doing holly leaves. Now, you, in episode, and sorry, in season one, episode 37, I showed you how to make this festive wreath. It's got uh, holly leaves and berries, it's got little mini stockings, and it also has pine cones. The pine cones are not from my pattern. Um, if you're interested in those, uh, just let me know and I'll tell you whose pattern I used for that. But the leaves, berries and the stockings are all patterns that I have done. Let me switch to the worktop and then you can perhaps see it a little better. So for these leaves, I worked in a number four weight, medium weight yarn. Um, for my UK friends, that would be a fairly thickish, DK yarn um, and in the US it's known as a worsted yarn. It is actually quite chunky so you get quite a big leaf on this one um, and uh, I, it's great for something like a wreath because there's quite a lot of area to fill up so you want a fairly chunky leaf on that but I wanted a finer leaf this time um, and I didn't feel that I needed to rewrite my holly and berry pattern but I wanted to see how it worked in a finer yarn. So I actually used sock yarn weight. Now, this is my the same leaf. This is the same leaf uh, pattern, but it's come out much smaller because I've used a much finer yarn. And I really like the result. Um, this, I have used one strand of sock yarn. But on this piece here, this holly ball that I've started to make, I've used the sock yarn, but I've used it double. And as you can see, again, it's the same leaf, but it's come out a little bigger. Not as big as the wreath leaf, that's hard to say, but um, it's bigger than the single strand. But that's the joy of using a finer yarn. You can actually use two strands together or um, one strand and you know, using the same pattern for this, obviously not for garments, but for this idea you can. So you might think, well, what can I use my holly leaves for? Well, this was a little ornament that I did last year with the, again, quite sizable leaves on a little Christmas pudding ornament. This I think would look, I think it would actually, I'm gonna take these leaves off because I think they're, it's gonna look a lot better with a smaller leaf on it. You could put them on a pillow, a nice fun cushion for pillow or cushion for festive season. You could actually use it as a trim for a hat and I actually think it looks really cute on this little hat. I like the difference between the proportionately bigger leaf and the small hat but you could clearly put it on a child's hat, something like that. You could get a sort of jewellery backing for like a little brooch pin and wear it with your ugly Christmas sweater or have fun with that. Or you could simply use an ornament hanger and hang it on your tree or your garden. Well, garland, not garden, your garland, whatever you want to do with it. So let me show you how to make the holly leaves. This is the pattern. This is uh, my pattern that I wrote out, that I typed out um, when we did the wreath. Um, if you want this pattern, um, I'm going to post it on Knit Matters page and it will be in JPEG form. The way the page is set up, I can't post it as a PDF. Um, but if you want it as a PDF, just direct message me or email me and I'll give you that detail later. But for now, let's start the holly leaf. So 
I'm going to use two strands and I'm going to use I'm going to be using for two strands of my sock yarn I found it worked out really nicely with a 3.5 millimeter needle which is a US 4 um, if you are using one strand of sock yarn I used a three millimeter or US 2 needle one little tip here if you're working with two strands of the same yarn there's nothing worse than having two balls of yarn rolling about and they do roll about when you're using two and they get sort of out of control but what I like to do is put my have a cake of yarn I wind it into a cake or have the store wind your yarn into a cake if that's possible and then have a center pull a ball or cake of yarn so you use one end from the center and one end from the outside and that's exactly what I've done here so I'm using one end from the outside and one end from the middle and it works a treat so to start our to start our um, holly leaf I'm going to cast on three stitches and I'm using what's known as the cable cast on very simple easy cast on that I'm sure we, many of us have used and for the first three rows you just knit them I'm just going to take a shortcut with that and I'm only going to knit one row just for the sake of time so I'm just going to knit one row and then I'm going to turn. and then what I like to do is actually pull that end so I get a nice sort of point on it because that's going to be the start of my holly leaf and it gives you a nice pointy end there. So turning round, now remember you'd have done three rows of knit, I'm just doing one. But So I would knit one, then I'm going to find that bar that lies between the right and the left hand needle. I'm going to pop it on my left needle and knit into the back of it. Then I'm going to knit into the back of my the next stitch that's on the needle. And then I'm going to find Bit tricky just having done one row but oh I found it straight away um, that bar again that lies between the left hand needle and the right hand needle and I'm going to knit into the back of it okay for my pearl rows I'm always going to do for this leaf a knit one I'm going to give it a little tug as well on that second stitch I want to tighten up the yarn a little bit I don't want a sloppy edge I need a firm edge and I'm going to just purl my way across and finish with the knit one. Okay. I'm only going to do the first few rows. You're not going to have to sit and watch me do 26 rows. Um, but I just want to show you how the pattern works. So the next row, I'm going to knit two. And I make one again. I, see, it does get easier the more rows you do to pick up that bar. Put it on my left hand needle knit into the back of it I'm going to knit into the back of the next stitch I'm going to pick up my that bar again between the two needles and knit into the back of it you can if you prefer just knit straight forward into the front of it if you prefer to do that you will get a little sort of pinprick hole which actually is quite pretty but um, for my purposes I'm just not doing that but I would suggest if you're doing a lot of holly leaves you could try it both ways and see which you like best I kind of just like knitting into the back because I know I've got to knit that center stitch in the back and it just makes it easy to remember that I'm knitting into the back of all the sort of shaping stitches now I've got a purl row again so knit one purl to the last stitch not to split my yarn that's the only thing when you're knitting with two I see I've just done it when you're knitting with two strands together it's easy to split the yarn okay so now I'm each time you're doing this while you're doing the shaping let me show you what I'm doing I'm working from this end I'm coming out and doing the shaping then I go in then I come out and shape even a little more then I go back in and then I finish off the end I'm just going to show you this up to this bit of shaping because then it's after that it's just repeating things and the final shaping for the end of the leaf is, is really simple you don't need me to show you that but you're, you're just sort of increasing 
how many knit stitches you do either side of the center stitch, which sort of creates a, like a little bit of prominence for the leaf vein. So now we're up to knit three. I'm making one, knitting into the back of it, knitting into the back of my knit stitch. Whoops, split the yarn, split my strands of yarn. There we go. Pick up that stitch, knit into the back of it, and I knit three. You're always going to have, a, you always want to have an odd number on your rows here. I am going to again knit one, give that a little tug. I want to keep my edge nice and firm. Purl all the way across. Okay. Now I'm going to knit four, snug that up a bit. that bar, knit into the back, knit into the back of that center stitch, pick up that bar again, knit into the back, and those obviously are increases, and now you're knitting four. Okay. Yarn. Right, I should have 11 stitches now, which I do. Now I'm going to start the shaping. Now, one little tip that I would give you, it says, my pattern now says to bind off three stitches purl-wise. What I have found works better, because this, these are holly leaves, remember, so I want these little kind of almost knobbly edges, because they're my little prickles, if you like. I found that if I just went straight into a purl, um, cast off, bind off, uh, and do it, the first stitch as a purl, I got a slightly softer edge and I want that nice sort of knobbly edge. So I'm going to knit one and then go back to purl. Knits my, I'm casting off three, binding off three. One, two, three. I'm gonna purl across the rest of the row. Finish off with my knit one. And the reason I'm snugging that stitch up I want to keep that edge firm because holly leaves are not flat, they're curved and they've got nice little sort of, say, they, they, they kind of, you know, they, they, they do nice things, they, 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 there's a nice sort of indentations in them. So you don't want this to be flat and just like it's stamped out of a piece of dough. It's meant to be, have little indentations and curls. So. Now, on this next shaping row, we're going to knit wise bind off three stitches. So we're going to bind off three knit wise. Okay, I still need to do my shaping on this row. And if you forget where you are, remember you have this center stitch and you're, you, you do a make one either side of that center stitch. So I need to knit one first, then I'm going to Lift that up, knit into the back of it, knit into the back of my center stitch, pick up that bar line across, knit into the back of it, and finish that row. Now I'm not going to carry on with that because the, the next set of shaping is exactly the same, just go a bit wider, and then when you get to the final three rows, because there's 26 rows to this pattern, um, it's really a case of you, you start shaping down on the purl row, shaping down on the knit row, and then finally you knit three together and fasten off the yarn. But you all know how to do that, so it's pretty straightforward. What I do want to show you is just what we're doing here with that. Obviously, we're making our increases either side of that center stitch, but that center stitch gives you sort of a bit of prominence there. It, it sticks out a little bit, it's, it's slightly embossed, so it gives you a nice sort of veiny look on the leaf, which is what you want. And as I say, you get, if you do a nice knit stitch on the pearl rows at either end, you get these nice little sort of knobbly bits that are representative of the prickles that you find on holly. And I found that works well. 
and also it gives the I've done nothing with these leaves other than knit them you know I haven't put wire through them I haven't done anything but you can sort of shape them and flip up the ends if you want so it, you get a three-dimensional leaf rather than just something flat which I really like um, and if you're doing something like that holly ball that's exactly what you want you you want to sort of you know add them on randomly as it were so you get this sort of mass of greenery and the pops of red with the berries which we're going to do now so let me show you how to do berries oh one thing I didn't say and I should do if you are thinking of making a holly ball like this this is just a poly a styrofoam or a polyfoam ball I found what works really effectively is to stick on the leaves with a glue gun it seems glue and fabric to me don't always kind of go together but for this purpose they're really good um, if you and it works really well so if you are using a glue gun do remember if you're working on especially if you're using an acrylic yarn and any sort of polyfoam put your glue gun on the low setting you don't want it on a high setting because you're going to damage your or melt your ball or your yarn or worse both so put it on the low setting but it does work really nicely okay so for the berries again we're knitting them uh, two strands together on that um, I will demonstrate the entire berry and I want to show you how to knit several berries in one go if you want to um, so with my berries I'm casting on three stitches three seems to be the magic number tonight or to, for this week so we're going to use a cable cast on again and I leave um, a bit of an end you probably don't need as much as that I leave you know a few inches because you're going to use that for fastening off your berry and attaching it if you're not gluing it but you certainly need to be tying off the end so and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute so we're casting on three stitches again cable cast on method snug that up a bit now this time our increases are kfbs which means knit into the front and the back of the end stitches so you're going to be knitting into the front and knitting into the back okay and again for i should say that when i did that um the little pair of leaves this very small one with single strand of sock yarn I'm doing my I would be doing the berries with the single strand so for this one the leaf was a single strand of yarn so two were the berries otherwise you're going to get bigger berries than you need they're out of proportion if you don't want to make berries another thing that you can do is just get beads get some nice sort of shiny or sparkly um, little beads of the right size and, and sew those on or stick those on but I I kind of like the, the knitted ones okay so we've done we've done an increased row and I will be doing this again in a second now we go along and pull the five stitches that we have on our needle okay. now immediately we've done that we start decreasing so all we're doing now is knitting two together knit one and knit two together okay now what we're going to do is purl three together okay simple 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 now if I was going to just do one berry I would just cut that off and fasten that you know put this tail end through that loop and pull it up tight so I would get one little berry um, this is one little berry then what I would do with my ends is just to literally tie them together so if I wanted to keep that as one berry all I would do once it's off the needle just imagine it's off the needle I would tie those ends together and pull that up so it's kind of rounding your berry up for you and you could just double knot it then either stitch it on or glue it on 
I'm not going to make one berry out of this. I want to show you how to do several berries in one go. So, whoops, I want my loose end there. Okay, back to my berry. I've just done my berry there. I've just purled three together. And now I want to knit that. Okay, that sort of locks that in. Now, in the pattern, I said if you want to make several berries, you would leave a length of yarn after fastening that off, then make another berry casting on close to the first one, and so on and so on. Um, I've actually, in doing this, I found a better way to do it. Uh, because, yes, you can certainly do that, and I did that for all the berries on the wreath that I did, but... Um, if I'm going to do a whole cluster of berries, I might not estimate the right length that I need to cut off and, you know, end up shorter, uh, less berries than I wanted, or end up with a almighty length of yarn that I've wasted. But a better way to do it is to do use a double pointed needle, as I have here, then simply slide that up to the other end and cast on again. If you want a bit more play, if you want a bit more length between your berries, then just simply do another knit stitch and slide it up to the other end again. I'm just going to keep it with one knitted stitch because I want them quite close. I'm going to cast on three stitches, or two more rather, I've already got a stitch on my needle. And I'm going to do the same as I've just done. So knit front and back into the same stitch, knit one, then knit front and back, purl five. You can really get quite a pace with these things and you know do quite a few in a uh, an evening or whenever you like to knit. If you really get a, a rhythm going, you end up with a, almost like a string of beads and red berries. Okay, oh, sorry, I'm talking and I should have done a knit two together there. Okay, let me get that back on my needle. Okay, now we know what to do. Sorry, get that um, split back on my needle. Knit two together. Knit two together. Knit one, knit two together, and pull three together. Pull three together, and do my knit stitch that sort of locks those three stitches into place. And if I want to do another berry, I just keep going. So that's the way to do several berries in one go. And then when you've finally fastened off, in fact, I'll do that right now because it's easier to sort of play with. Uh, okay. When you've fastened off, you can make use of these tail ends and use that to, you know, um, just put... A yarn needle and snug that up to that one. Sometimes I find it easier to just use one strand. I'd put that on a yarn needle, pull that up, put a stitch in it, do the same with that end. And if you've got three or four or whatever, you can use the same tail end. You just need to make it a little bit longer. So that's how you do more than one berry in one go. And I think they make really nice little berries. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's, let me, right. So a couple of things, let me go back to, so don't forget, you can use whatever yarn weight you want to make your leaves and berries. The, the thicker the yarn, the thicker the needle that you'll need to use. Uh, and just change the needle size accordingly uh, to match the yarn or simply play about with it until you get the result that you like. If you're not sure what needle size works with what yarn weight, there's lots of online charts that give you that information. Um, 
or if the yarn still has a ball band on it, um, if it's in your stash it may not, but um, hopefully you, it still has a notification of what the type of yarn is. And often you'll find there's a suggestion for needle size. Use that for guidance. I'm not ma mad about using ball band um, needle size is as a go-to. They're meant to be a guide, but we're not making a garment, so gauge isn't of any relevance here. Just get the fabric that you want. Um, but you do want a reasonably firm fabric um, and nice sort of crispy edges, as it were, so that the leaves keep their shape. So I hope that's given you some ideas and that you'll have fun with your holly leaves. Um, between now and next week, I'm going to get that holly ball finished so you can really see that, hopefully, in its glory. Um, uh, as I say, I'll post the pattern on the Knit and Matters page. If you want it as a PDF form, please direct message me. If you direct message me, um, you need to give me your email address in that message. Don't leave your email address in the threads below. It's um, for just for your own personal security. I'm not fond of that. Just direct message me or you can simply email me at Cheryl at knittermatters.com. Cheryl at knittermatters.com. And as always, if you have any um, questions or feedback on this episode or any others, please let me know. Um, next week's festive knit i haven't done a sample for it yet i know what we're going to do but i'll leave that as a surprise as i can't show you the sample tonight or today i should say um this episode and all others are going to be uploaded not only on the knitting matters page but to youtube uh, within 24 hours and if you're looking for any other episode uh, it's the easiest way to find them is on YouTube. There's a complete playlist there of over 100 videos. Um, again, if you want a copy of the playlist printed out so you know what's in each video, just message me and I'll be happy to send that to you. Um, if you like this episode or any, if you like Knitter Matters, do let me know and let me know if there's any topics that you want me to cover. As I say, for the run-up to Christmas, where it's all about festive knits, but I always like to have ideas for the next season. So thank you so much for watching, and until next time, keep well, keep calm, and keep knitting. Bye for now.